Okay, next story. Um, kind of just a small thing. I thought this is an interesting graph. We've been talking for a while about the collapsing fertility rate in Japan. Everyone was looking at Japan as the country that was uh, the brown line there. Um, you know, starting in 1980, Japan had the lowest fertility rate in the world, and everyone was sort of looking at it. Uh, and since then, Hong Kong uh, has plummeted. Wow, actually below 1.0 for a time. South Korea, which back in 1980 had a, a fertility rate of 2.5. I mean, they were pumping them out. Uh, they are now down to one uh, as well. Uh, in fact, by by this chart, they've actually gone higher than that. But I, I heard that like 2020, they've gone down to uh, one. Um, oh, in fact, South Korea is blue. Oh, so they are down to one. Uh, Taiwan also has collapsed from being wow so wait a minute south korea is blue so they were nearly at three and taiwan was at 2.5 and south korea and taiwan have both collapsed way below japan um you've got china there as well uh is actually isn't crazy one one child policy and they have, uh, now have a higher birth rate than japan and Thailand as well coming down. So just interesting sign of the times. Uh, like I often talk about these problems that you hear about the aging society and whatnot in Japan. It started here earlier, but Japan is now, in a way, these problems are happening in other countries now. And, and not just in, in Asian countries and Western countries too, in a far more accelerated way. Um, a lot of discussion happening about it. I think I've saw, seen a lot of discussion just in the last few days, videos and stuff like this about this. Um, TLDR uh, is a good YouTube channel that I think talked about this, and they may, they mentioned that apparently two trends are happening in Europe um, that are being noticed. Um, one, sperm average sperm counts have collapsed, uh, which they think are affecting fertility uh, in the last like 20 years. The other thing that's happening is apparently average penis size has also collapsed. Uh, again, I don't know. Oh, how do they check that honestly like i've never been <laughs> i've never been told to line up uh sperm count i guess i can imagine you you know people but even then i mean uh, how do you do a statistical sample i guess if you have people going to fertility clinics people that already have problems you could get that data but yeah probably best not to think about that too much i suppose but i can certainly understand how you've got a certain pool of data for sperm counts and you can measure it getting lower i don't know how they're measuring that that, that that male organ sizes are, are, are reducing but uh but apparently this is something that's happened globally in the last 20 years and, and again i don't know how it would have any impact on fertility but it, it came up in a story about fertility um <laughs> i don't think that's a problem actually but uh yeah yeah so so people are obviously worried maybe about the wrong things in some in some cases but uh yeah it's happening all over the world and some people are saying it's because of all the plastics and uh, the hormone disruptors and you know uh, a lot of people say it's from tofu um but again look at Jap well look at japan well that's that's not a good argument but all the things that people think i remember watching uh a pizza review show and they were saying a tofu pizza tofu will give you boobs it won't it won't look at japan look at japan everybody eats to tofu all the time so but the plastic stuff there are disruptors that's one of the theories uh, the other theory i think just modern life and people not wanting to have kids the, the lower counts who knows it could uh, to me it could it, it could be easy access to adult material on the internet it's just me meaning that guys are just <laughs> they're, they're, you know releasing the guys uh more often who knows they, they keep the counts low but uh, the result is uh, globally that uh, the replacement level most countries are now relying on immigration to replace their populations or to try to maintain a sustainable population to pay enough tax for the elderly uh, and that's something that europe and america have done although increasing problems in europe around that and in japan they are you know not really doing that and they're accepting the population is going to head for like a 40 percent decline in the next 20 years um and not, humankind has never gone through that before another thing that TDL, tldr pointed out about this as well and this is definitely what's, ha what's been happening in japan is there's a bit of a vicious cycle aspect to it once the population goes down across generations and you have generations of people that um grew up as single children or whatever it's actually really hard to encourage people to suddenly have three or four children again you know like they grow up with that being normal this is what's apparently happening in china now china is actually trying to encourage people to have more kids and they don't want to uh, countries like hungary have been successful at inc encouraging people to have more children and paying incentives to have babies and whatever and japan is doing the same thing they they pay for all the costs and whatever of having children and you, you get a stipend and everything but even then uh, the problem isn't cash people are worried about losing their lifestyle their freedom their ability to do what they like uh from having kids and, and, and once people realize that it's kind of hard to take that back uh, you know a, a, a cash bribe isn't really enough 
So, you know, it could be all the things, right? Uh, it could be plastics, it could be the tofu, it could be the adult entertainment accessible, it could be the smaller penises. Who knows? Who knows what's causing it all? It could be all the things. But uh, yeah, the result is you have a really intractable, intractable problem. I'm kind of of the school that honestly, um, I don't know that perpetual... I mean, uh, while I wouldn't advocate for population reduction, uh, I, I think it's actually great to have more people and I'm excited that we're about to live in O'Neill cylinders and live on Mars. And I think that we can actually technologically, you know, we don't have to go back into a dark age to avoid killing the planet. I think we actually can technologically. I'm optimistic that we can solve environmental issues like global warming with technology and with, you know, moving off the planet and stuff like that. I don't think we have to go backwards and I'm not anti-population. But at the same time, um, since it's here and it's happening, I think it's one of those things which, you know, can be managed and can have an upside, you know, having a bit more living space, uh, being able to retool areas. I, th I think it's an opportunity which people should also take. So anyway, we'll see. But that's I drew quite a lot out of that graph, didn't I? Uh, I should keep an eye on time into the comments. Um, yeah, to why why is saying that uh, it's proven. I mean, I think I've read stuff about that as well. Although, you know, who who really? Yes, I've seen that the what do they call them? endocrine disruptors or something like that. I've, I'm familiar with what you're talking about, but but again, um, it is still not absolutely certain. Like, is that coming in? Is that from me drinking water in a pet bottle? Is that doing it? Um, you know, like like what's causing. The things that you know is it from the, from the from the general water supply even if you can say that that is something that can happen from plastics like then how is it directly through what route are we ingesting it and is how is it affecting if that is the case so it's it's hard yeah. uh, quinn rankin before i jump in uh population reduction will play havoc with government retirement pyramid schemes well, that's exactly what japan is facing uh and, and yes that's why the retirement system here which is taxpayer funded or at least is mandatory savings but it's it, it's a fake scheme they've already spent all the money on it on public works the front people's mandatory uh, superannuation savings and it's going to collapse and everyone knows that so that's that's absolutely correct uh, Quinn Rankin. Um, yeah, just just uh, going the opposite way in Japan, um, kind of again behind. I, I don't like to say advanced or behind, but Japan, uh, one of the last countries in the world, along with North Korea, to uh, to approve the uh, contraceptive pill, uh, like took until the late 1990s. Uh, before it was approved and the debate around it the political debate around it was it was opposed by the gynecologists and it was opposed by politicians the gynecologists and it's funny you don't hear so much about it nowadays but the 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 story was back then that you know they used to make so much money from abortions i mean it, again it, it was it was pretty common and routine it's something i haven't heard about really since i've got here but in the 90s i'd hear like yeah it was really common for for girls to not use any contraception and to have multiple abortions before they decide to get married and settle down and it was sort of done routinely and it was big business for the doctors and the doctors would oppose birth control um, kind of crazy that that, that that reproductive doctors would oppose birth control, but they did. They, they It was a racket for them. And for the politicians and the LDP, they opposed uh, approving birth control because they saw how it had driven feminism in America and other countries, and they thought it would disrupt Japanese culture, and they blocked it for years and years. And it wasn't until after they rushed through, um, you know, Pfizer, the... Um, uh, Viagra. It wasn't until they rushed through Viagra after 20 years of blocking contraceptive pills um, that that finally uh, they had to give in. In fact, I think it was actually during the time that the opposition parties were in power that they gave in and they passed it. So here's another kind of case different to that, but but this is the Plan B pill. Um, so a little bit more controversial um, that people can take after you know the event. Uh, right now, you have to go get this from a uh, prescription from a doctor. And uh, again, some people who are intimidated to go and explain the situation, why they need a plan B bill, pill to a doctor. And the doctors' association themselves, um, they, they they look like the Ministry of Health looks like it is going to approve uh, making this across the counter in pharmacies, making it available in pharmacies that you won't have to go and get a doctor's slip to go get it. Um, again, gynecologists are opposing it because it's kind of a loss of control and business for them. There's a cynical way of looking at it. I suppose there are health, co health consequences, but again, it, it definitely raises the barrier to asking for it for people who need it. And it's one of these things that's been blocked for a long time, including the debate. If the country is losing population, why would we make it harder to have... Uh, you know, why would we be facilitating uh, contraception? It comes up from elderly people saying it, uh, including, you know, I think I talked about the, 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 the pep talk from the mayor the other week about who was saying, you know, everybody start hooking up and, you know, um, 
do, do, doing all that stuff with each other please go ahead you know like the mayor I mean that's the creepiest uh, welcome talk I think a mayor has ever given um, but you know again this isn't the way that you increase the population by withholding I mean <laughs> uh, and unfortunately the thing is they end up at the guy one way or another Japan doesn't have the same stigma against abortion uh, that you know at least not religious so you know they're going to end up there one way or the other this is i think a preferable thing so yeah it's interesting it's again like coming late to japan and it is controversial but the ministry of health is deciding to do it and it's a small sign of progress again on gender issues av84k the way modern societies work laws uh, work etc might also not be helpful in terms of having and supporting children poor countries are the ones with many children yeah yeah i find that really interesting av84k uh, absolutely correct it, it is funny and, and you look at that graph before um, the the high birth rates are definitely associated with when those companies were still very much you know developing and as they became wealthier and more successful yeah you'd think you you work hard in order to you know be able to provide for a family and to comfortably have a family and yet when you get into that position then you don't want to do that anymore seems to be the the lesson it is again the, the the old story about i remember my history teacher describing the baby boom when i was in high school you know everybody got back from world war ii there was nothing else to do <laughs> there was a baby boom <laughs> i suppose that's part of rural and poor areas as well you know lack of other entertainment i suppose but um yeah it's certainly the correlation between um all over the world you know particularly where you have rich and poor areas side by side um